Hi, I'm Harlan Krumholtz, Editor-in-Chief of Jack and Professor of Medicine at Yale University. I'm here with the amazing Anya Yastrobov, who I consider to be one of the leaders in the world in obesity medicine. Uh, Anya, I want I get some quick hits for you. Let me ask you this. Is obesity a disease? Should we be thinking of it as a disease? Absolutely. Obesity is a disease like any other chronic complex disease, and that's exactly how we should be treating it. We need to target the biology of obesity. We need to discuss the biology with our patients. This is so key. It really releases our patients from the shame and the blame that they've so unfairly faced for so many years. So this is a key point. Well, what, what convinced you it was a disease? I mean, a lot of people think, you know, this is just about eating better, exercising more. It's, it's just about willpower. What convinced you that we should be medicalizing obesity? I mean, I, there's still a lot of people who don't buy into this idea of obesity as a disease. I mean, I think that for years we asked our patients to do something that we would never ask for other diseases. So we asked our patients basically to treat their own disease. We said, eat less and move more. Now, let me ask you, if you see a patient with high blood pressure, do you say, well, um, your blood pressure is really high. You need to go home and eat less salt. Um, yes, and, right. we say you know, that. <laughs> well, okay, fine. So you do say that. So I'm not saying that it's not important to eat a healthy diet and to exercise. Of course it is, but that's not the only treatment, just like the only treatment for uh, hypertension is not a DASH diet. But it really, it really does begin... I mean, everything is about the patient and everything is about what the patients teach us and what my patients have taught me. And really what it was is that we were advising patients to eat less and move more or eat more healthfully and move more. And yet that was not working for many people. Um, and again, the reason why I come back to other diseases is because when we see a patient with diabetes, that's not the only thing that we recommend. We recommend healthy diet and exercise in the context of giving them medications that can help treat that biology. So in terms of obesity, what's actually happening is that our body developed this amazing biology and that biology was created so that we could store energy. And we store energy as fat. So that's a great thing. If we could not store energy, we would die. We would die as a species. So we created this way to defend energy, to defend ener energy stores, and specifically to defend fat mass. So we call it the defended fat mass or set point. And so what happens is that there's all these hormones that communicate to our brain, this is how much energy you should store. So that's wonderful. And we have this amazing biology. And so one might say, well, if we have this amazing biology, then why in the world do so many people have obesity? It's half of Americans. It's a quarter of the world population. Why is that? And half of Americans did not wake up one morning and decide to have the disease of obesity. And the answer is our obesogenic environment. So what happened is that within the environment that we live in that is filled with ultra processed food, all this stress, lack of physical activity, lack of sleep, what's happened is on a population level, um, our defended fat mass has increased. And so that's why on a population level, there's so much obesity. So that tells us two really important things. The first thing is we have to keep working on our environment. We cannot continue to, to have this obesogenic environment that basically creates more chronic diseases, including obesity. Um, and the second thing it tells us, though, is that for the people who already have obesity, who have these changes in terms of how much uh, fat their or how much uh, fat their brain tells their body to store in terms of in terms of those people who already have the disease of obesity, we have to provide them or offer them uh, additional treatments. And those treatments include medications or surgery. Um, now, in terms of medications, what we think is they um, they actually work on that defended fat mass. So the medications, most of the medications that we have, they actually work in the brain. There are receptors in the brain for these various uh, uh, hormonal pathways. And that is actually how we think that they work. Um, now, to answer your question about what about uh, the research that I had done earlier on in my career, so that was based on the fact that I saw my patients coming in and we would recommend certain things, and yet, you know, they were still craving these foods that were so highly desirable and, um, and, you know, patients were wanting to, even though, even if they were adhering to, let's say, eating salads with lean protein and exercising, they would, um, 
you know, still potentially eat these ultra processed, um, very delicious foods that were high in sugar and high in fat, especially in stressful situations uh, when life just became life. And so I wanted to really start to understand, well, does the brain find these foods to be more desirable? Do we crave these foods more? And if somebody has obesity, then potentially are there changes that are occurring in the brain that can lead people to actually want those types of foods more? Um, so we looked at responses to people's favorite foods. We looked at responses to food pictures. We looked at responses to actually ingesting glucose and fructose. Uh, so Obviously, our brain really likes sweet things, uh, and and there are differences in how our brains respond uh, if we have obesity or if we don't have obesity. And so this question arose of, well, are these changes potentially reversible? Um, and we don't know. Right now, what we know is that for a medication to work, we need to continue that medication, and that's exactly what we see in other diseases. So if you stop an antihypertensive, your blood pressure goes back up. If you stop an anti-obesity medication, your weight goes back up, and we think that's because your defended fat mass goes back up when the medication is stopped. Um, so I think a lot more research has to be done looking at that, but so far, what we're seeing is very similar to other chronic complex diseases. That's great. Thank you so much.